Limerick 214, Tipperary 18 points. And like, Tipperary just had this game won. It was 13 points to four at half time, I think I have it here. And Tip went 14 points to, to four ahead. And then for the rest of the game, they just got bullied. I think it was 2-6 to 2-8 that Limerick scored without reply. You have the uh, a kind of feeling that this mightn't be a bad thing for Tipperary to lose this game. No, I actually think it's it's a great thing. It's from the position they were in, it's it's not great on the surface. But uh, like when they won the All Ireland in 2016, we we're all talking about 2017 about how great a panel they are. They're close to through to the league. But that was final. always nonsense from people who don't really get it. They just think, all right, they've won underage. They've won the current thing. It'll roll on and, and, and feed itself. Like it just never works that way. They had an impressive league that year, though. They were they were playing they were playing good stuff. I just don't think I think it's it's not a bad thing to get a little a little kick up the arse at this stage of the year. Not at all, especially in the in the, the way they've done it. They were up ten, um, they were up ten and were were bullied somewhat. And I'd say Sheedy will go back to that. They were like Limerick were just so much more aggressive. It's like the inter- introduction of, of William O'Donnell would kind of just turn the game. I would say oh, a, sub, a sub coming in. He's so abrasive and aggressive. He just brings like you have when you have Hegarty, Dara Burns, and a couple others there. He just brings that bit more physicality to it. But I, I genuinely don't think it's a bad thing at all. They're back training uh, probably about two two and a half weeks since they came back from holidays. Sometimes uh, things can be a bit false. If they'd gotten a win, just say they'd won. Just say it was a draw match in the second half yeah. and they'd won by nine points. It's kind of like lads are kind of thinking, ah, oh, we're you know we're going all right here, we're going all right. Now it's like we totally ran out of gas. We're not fit enough. We need to get the shoulder back to the wheel again, and it's a nice little eye opener at the perfect time of the year to me. But to me, the reason that it isn't a good thing is because you you'd kind of thought that when Tipperary beat Wexford in those circumstances in the semi final last year, all of a sudden Tipperary are back to a team that can win a tight game, that can win under duress. And here was a Tipperary team that had itself in a great position. Things got tight towards the end and you thought, can Tip eke this one out? And it turned out that they couldn't. It's, a, it's, it's sort of ingraining into your team that we lose tight games. And that's the last thing that Tipperary want. If they come up against Limerick in the summer and Tip, Tip find the form that they had at the end of 2019 and Limerick find their usual form over the last two years, it's going to be a tight game. It's going to come down to the death mm. and Tipperary... Are gonna like? Is there gonna be a muscle memory of we lose these tight games and Limerick like look we step up? I just think they were goosed. Genuinely, I just think they were goosed. I just don't think the forward like the forward line from Tip. The forward line from Tip. I know John McGrath got three from play. Jake Morris got three from play. But other than that, uh, you know, there's good young players coming through, but they didn't pass this test. And I know it's a tough test. It's one of the toughest tests against the Limerick team that put out a really strong team and brought. Excellent players off the bench. Lads mm. who will start in the summer. Game changers. But yeah. for for Tipperary, does that knock some of those players? You know, does uh, it set them back at all? No, I don't think so. Even some of the younger fellas wouldn't have had a lot of them wouldn't have had that much done. Uh, mm. Some of them would be in playing bits of Fitzgibbon and that as well. Like Jake Morris playing Fitzgibbon with Joel as well. You know, he'd be he'd be busy. Craig Morgan that came on is playing Fitzgibbon with Mary Eye. They're all kind of busy at the moment. It's a busy enough time. Um, I I don't know if it creeps into the psyche. I don't know if a league game at this stage of the year creeps into the psyche. The fact that they lost the lead they did is not great. But it was um, Limerick were back in the game. You know, ten minutes into the second half, basically, mm. and it was. Yeah, I suppose it was just it was just the abrasiveness of, of Will O'Donoghue and they were just clinical taking the two goal chances as well. Like if if Jason Ford had got that goal at the end, it kind of would have been it sounds mad to say it after it had been ten up, it kind of would have been robbery. Oh, it would have been daylight robbery, because like if you look at and I kind of do out the, the kind of score line like this and sort of I can get a decent sort of map of of the of the scoring and all that. Like Tipperary were absolutely on top in the first half. But after Paddy Cadell scored a point in the twenty eighth minute Tipperary scored six more. One, two, three, four, four frees. So they scored six more, two more points from play. Yeah. In, in that amount of time, 40 odd minutes. And even in the last maybe 20 minutes, Tipperary had just six shots and Limerick looked like they had about 15, 20. Would I be right in saying something similar happened in the league game last year? Was there a tip fade out in the league game last year, the first game they played in the Gaelic rounds? I, I seem to remember it being tight till about 50 minutes and then Limerick pulled away that's just in my in my head anyway I'm, fair, I'm fairly sure that's accurate as well yeah. I, I don't see I don't see a league game in, you know infecting their psyche or anything like that yeah. though, to be honest with you not at this stage but like f- for Limerick do you think that they kind of feel like we need to wash away what happened in 2019 the way we 
had a bit of a non-start and a non-start in this game also. The way we had a bit of a non-start against Kilkenny when one eight two behind, we need to hit the ground running uh, this season, which is why Tip picked eight starters from the All Ireland. Limerick would have had more, and then the guys that came off the bench were Hegarty, Willow Donahue, Sean Finn came on in the first half. So do you think for Limerick they're just trying to set down a marker straight away? And wash away what happened last year. Hundred percent, yeah. Like that's, so, the game mattered more to Limerick than Tip. Oh, hundred percent, yeah. That that's that that feeds into why that feeds into why I think it's um it's not that big of a deal for Tipperary. Were, were Tipperary eyeing this game? Not at all. Mm. Were Limerick eyeing this game? Somewhat. They mightn't have had all the personnel that they wanted um, playing, but I think and they were given some opportunities. But they were definitely eyeing this game more than uh, Tipperary. It's more. It was more of a necessity for Limerick to get a win. If Limerick had been beaten. And just say the you know beating in one of their next two games as well. It's just like you know what's going on in Limerick. There's a bit of a mm. hangover now. They're after coming from ten points down against the All Ireland champions, and they're in a lovely position for the rest of the league. Do you do you subscribe to this idea that Tipperary have a psychological issue with Limerick? That was discussed on the Sunday game, and it seemed to be the kind of consensus was that Tipperary do have an issue with Limerick now at this stage. I wouldn't subscribe to that, to be honest with uh. you. The, the the Munster final was was the only game, and like that was. That, there was diff- there were circumstances coming into that. They were obviously missing Cottle Barrett and they were, they were missing Bonner Matter from the previous game, which they played them either either week or two weeks previous. If they if they'd met again last year, it would have been it would have been a lot tighter. I just think I I just think I don't think it's a psychological thing. I just think Limerick are a bit better than Tip. That's that's all. In I an think. overall sense, yeah, I just think they're a bit better. That's all. And if you let's let's dismiss the group game from Munster last year when Tipperary beat Limerick because Limerick put out a bit of a shadow side and Tipperary went uh, all guns blazing to win this game, ended up losing Barrett, ended up losing Bonner out of it. Tipperary were beaten badly in the Gaelic grounds in Munster the year before, absolutely pasted in the Munster final in the Gaelic grounds last year. I don't know if, if Liam Sheedy would have been happy to go in and, and lose this game, especially on a fade out too, because Limerick probably feel in their dressing room, we're actually the men of the scenario here. And when we put the it up men are here. Yeah, <laughs> and when we put it up to Tipperary, they're not able for, not able for it. I think that's a great position for Liam Sheedy to have for the rest of the season. I really do. Yeah, they're all Ireland champions and they have a big point to prove. Mm. I, that's the way I'd be looking at it, definitely. Thanks for watching our game. Don't forget to like and share the videos. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe.